I got junk in my trunk. Problem is the trunk still looks like this. Sounds like we need to take a ride, doesn't it? It's a Zune. I'm gonna run it like a boss. Also guys, I make custom speaker boxes. Excitement starts now. Take this car and blow it sky high. Ew, that's sticky. Look, they were a fabric au Japon. So in today's video, we're gonna put this 80s vintage Alpine pullout stereo in that 80s vintage Mitsubishi Starion. And there's a good possibility we won't even burn the car down. Welcome to Project Time Garage. I ran across this vintage 1980s Alpine pullout stereo. I know, pullout, how 80s is that? For an unbeatable price and a really good deal. As soon as I saw it, I realized this is the radio for me. And there were a bunch of reasons for that. Mainly, the wiring. If you'll notice, it doesn't have quite enough wires coming out of the back. We have a constant memory wire. We have a switch 12 volt wire, a remote turn on wire or power antenna lead. What does it say it's gonna be? Power antenna lead and a ground. But there are no speaker wires. That's because a lot of the manufacturers back in this era were using DIN cables to run between the radio and the amplifier. This radio requires an amplifier. It doesn't have any built in means of amplification, hence the no speaker wires. Rather, these two wires here, these two cables, they're cable bundles, they carry the amp turn on, they carry the left and right uh, low pass outputs, and this one will carry amp turn on and left and right uh, front low pass. So I think what happened, I think somebody bought this radio and thought that they would just put it in their car and probably got it home and realized, don't know what to do with all that. Those are awful fresh and clean cuts there. Looks like somebody has kind of played with it on a bench. Also, these wires are twisted together. So I'm thinking that somebody got it home and realized it wouldn't work for their application. So they sold it super cheap. That's where we scored because we know what to do with this. We're gonna actually break out our low pass and we're gonna put RCA cables on this and we're gonna make this a usable radio. Also, we have the perfect vehicle to put this in. We'll put it in this. This is my 1988 Mitsubishi Starion ESI-R. And quite a while back, I put out a video, which I'll link up here, of replacing the, the head unit that's already, that was in this car. See, the original person that owned this, or the person that owned it before me, had installed an aftermarket, um, I believe it was a, I don't remember what the brand was on it now, uh, touchscreen stereo. It, it, I think it was a lower end stereo because the amplifiers on it just didn't sound good. Uh, it didn't have a lot of power. It didn't, it just, it couldn't drive the speakers. Now, I think he upgraded all the speakers to Polk Audio and, and they were pretty good speakers. I just, I didn't have enough head unit to drive them. So, plus that, and I really wanted that, that original factory look. You know, the car is really low miles and kind of a time capsule inside and out. So I really wanted that factory appearance radio. So I hunted all over creation and found three radios and it took three radios to actually rob parts back and forth from to make one work. And wouldn't you know, the other day I was riding down the road in this thing and the radio lets out a loud pop and it's over with. So, uh, I think in order to have a factory radio in this car, which I do prefer, I'll have to probably send one out for repair and just pay somebody to go through it. Um, also, the tape decks haven't worked on any radio I've touched, seen, smelled, tasted, or found. They're all dead. And it's not belt problems. I replaced the belts on all mine. It's a, uh, there's an IC uh, module in there, a little uh, Motorola chip, I believe it is. Thing dies uh, or, or goes bad or something happens to it, but it's the logic that controls the tape deck itself. It'll pull the tape in and then spit it back out pretty much across the board, everyone I've found. Since that radio is defunct and since the car was manufactured in 1988 and since the radio was manufactured in somewhere between 87 and 89, what a perfect fit for an 80s sports car, an Alpine head unit. I figure that's the perfect home for that Alpine. Even if it's temporarily, it's the perfect home for it. Also, if any of you guys came here for the Starion, 
and are interested in one of these shirts, you can check out my Teespring store. There's a link down there in the video description box. Scroll down below this video and you'll see it. There's a link there to where you can get uh, this Starion shirt. I also took the time to make one that says Conquest TSI, just in case you have the Conquest version of this car. Here I have most of what I think I'm gonna need in order to bench this and put it in the car both. So these are my two boxes of radio stash crap. Most of this box relates to the Starion itself, uh, like the, the steering wheel interface module so that I can keep my steering wheel controls, um, a wiring harness adapter, a couple of the other radios, another face, another equalizer missing some parts, cannibal, cannibal pile mainly for this. And over here we have, I ran across these right here a long time ago or, or, or some time back. These are supposed to be compatible, or these are, these are install kits, radio install kits, that are supposed to be compatible with that car. Evidently, it takes a couple of different kits to kind of, you know, share parts between in order to make it work right. So we'll see how that works. I really have no idea. Oh, also, this is the amplifier that I'm going to run. I'm going to run it like a boss. Probably not the brand that I would choose if I were going out to buy an amp specifically for this application. But I have it on hand. It, it just seems silly to go out and buy another four channel amp. I need a four channel. I've got three or four other amps that are two channels, but I need a four channel amp because I want, you know, I want independent speakerage. So we got to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, for what we're doing with the car, I, I don't feel like that's going to be an issue at all. Um, I don't even know if the amplifier works. Literally, I, I score a lot of this stuff because, you know, a lot of cars come through my hands and a lot of times you get a used car and it'll have a sub in the trunk or some speakers in the trunk or something. I usually sell any vehicle that I work on. I usually sell it kind of back to the factory again. I try to make it nice and clean and factory. So usually I just stick all the, uh, you know, all the, the, the stereo components in my storage container and you know if i need them later i have them uh so anyway that's the amp we're going to use this is just garbage that i've collected over time um we're going to need these these are rca connectors that you solder on we're going to need two of them or two pairs of them four totals those are female yep and we'll need this speaker wire and we'll need this speaker wire. I'll leave that in there. I'll probably use this just to check the tuner in here. It picks up a little bit. And to test, I'm going to use these. That is beyond cool as far as the vintage audio goes. These are a pair of, uh, of Alpine uh, 6660s. Look, they were a Fabrique au Japon. But I have a pair of those here. One of them I've, I've had to repair the, uh, the cone in it a little bit, but it still works, it plays fine. Part of me would love to, to find a way to put those in that car just to have them there. But if you look at the, at the speaker locations, they're just too small. I, Think they're there may be five and a quarters i don't think they're they're six inches like these are but i bet these would sound good in there uh so anyway that's what we're gonna gonna use uh to bench all this we're gonna power it with uh we're gonna power the radio with this jump box i have a uh, i have a uh, cigarette lighter adapter and this thing puts out i don't know i think it puts out i think it puts out a couple of amps on these if i'm not mistaken which is way more than enough just for the radio itself. And then I'll just kind of jam the cables in there. I have a battery sitting over here that we'll use to power the amplifier. So, uh, so that's the stuff. Get set up, we're gonna get rolling here. So hooking this thing up is gonna be pretty straightforward, I think. We'll take the, ew, that's sticky. I'll just take the uh, extension cord here or the uh, cigarette lighter cord. We'll plug it into the battery and that's plus and that's minus. So we should be able to 
plug our minus in. Make sure it's turned off. I guess we can just jam that in there, right? Yes, we can. There's that. Okay, so that's a good sign. Um, it's working. And I don't have to worry about having a dummy load on it because there are no amplifiers. It's all uh, low outputs for RCA. So that's step one in the right direction. The radio power's up. Now, let's get some sound out of it. I'm gonna turn everything back off and we'll focus on these wires. Now, if you'll look, somebody has already wrote a bunch of F's down that. Either that means they failed or that's the front. That one has an R on it. So I'm gonna assume that's the rear. Okay. I'm gonna strip the sheath off of this, the outer sheath, and we'll see what we have um, left inside there. Just wanna be really careful when I strip it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too crazy with it. There, so you can see you have that typical coaxial type deal going on there. That is a, a ground sheath. And then inside here, we should have even some more of that. Yeah, we do. Um, okay, so this red and green, one of these will be our amplifier turn on. I don't know what the other one's for. And these right here are going to be two more coaxial leads. Look here. You can split these, and these also have um, a ground sheath on them and then a smaller center tap. All right. There, like so. So that's what that's going to look like. Strip this one back. I'm going to strip it a little further back just to give myself a little more room to maneuver. There we go. So this is the front. I don't know which one is left and which one is right, but we can figure that out using the radio here in a second. Um, Probably the best thing to do is go ahead and get these things out and we'll put them, we'll just kind of temporarily stick them together. Make sure everything's gonna work. And if it works, we will solder them together and send it. If you guys are interested in any of the stuff that I'm gonna use here, like these things or um, this, or, or even the install kit that I'm about to use for this car, I'm gonna link all of this stuff down in the description box below this video. So you can pause the video, scroll down, and you'll see all the description, and I'll link out Amazon links for all of this stuff in case you guys are doing it. I had to hunt around for a while for some of this stuff, so save you a little time if I can. I have no idea why these things are so thick. They sure are. That's a lot of wire right there. You would think that's speaker wire. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strip these back just a little bit more because they're so long. Get myself even more slack. All right, there we go. <clears throat> One of these has a black band, the other one is going to have a red band. So I think I'm going to just do a Hail Mary pass and try black to black. The black band, black one of these. Oh wait, I forgot to strip that, didn't I? On account of I'm an idiot. May just be able to strip this with my fingernail. Let's see. Yep. Sure can.
And you don't have to worry about these things getting together either because there's no amplification to worry about. You're not gonna blow any internal amplifiers on the radio. So I'll just twist these together. And I'll twist this one together. There's that. Just kind of lay it aside. Do the same thing with this one. And black. Okay. Let me turn the attention toward the amplifier for a minute. Let's get it worked out. So this thing has a 12 volt, a ground, and this is the remote turn on. So I should be able to just take my power wire and shove it under there. My ground under here. And I'm gonna use this for the remote turn on wire. We'll hook it to the power antenna lead for now on the radio. There we go. Speakers. Let's work on those real quick. So on the speakers, I'll use channel one. I don't really know which one I want to use for front and rear, but I know that this terminal says that it's positive. As long as it's positive, it's positive. I'm good with it. And that's the positive I got going to my speaker. This one is negative. And then for our other speaker, how is it hooked up? The copper color one is to positive. Actually, I'm going to use both these on channel one since I only have one set of RCAs. At least right here I do. That one. And the aluminum color one is negative. Like that. Now, that should be the amplifier hooked up with the exception of power. And we're gonna go ahead and do that now too. Now these are specialized um, battery terminals, uh, hammers, um, pliers, uh, bolt head rounder offers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over here and we're just gonna clamp it to the positive battery post because this is very temporary. Yep. And we should get a pop. Yep, we got a small pop there. Just charging that capacitor, I would think. But the amplifier doesn't turn on when you do that. Just keep that in mind. It's not on at that point until you provide power to that remote turn on. So the amplifier's hooked up to the battery, but if you notice the power light's not on, and the power light's not on because it requires this remote wire to get 12 volts in order to kick the amp on. So if I take this and I give it 12 volts, click, amplifier just came on. We're gonna hook that wire to, the, to this blue here. And this blue is the amp turn, or the uh, power antenna wire. Basically, it, it's the same as the remote turn on wire, basically. When you turn the radio on, this gets 12 volts. You turn the radio off, that, that takes 12 volts away, which shuts off the amplifier, which means your amplifier doesn't have to run all the time. On our amplifier, I'm going to plug the RCAs into inputs for channel one and two, I guess. One and two, red to red. Okay, we have our RCAs hooked up, going into our amplifier. We have our radio power hooked up, going to the jumper box, which is definitely turned off right now. We have our amplifier power and ground going up to the battery. We have our speaker leads hooked up and we have our remote turn on wire running to the radio. Everything here should be right, except I'm going to go to this amp real quick and I'm gonna turn both channels all the way down as far as power goes, because I'm not an audio guy, but I, I sure have put a bunch of these things in just for myself throughout the, the, the years. I was really into this stuff in the late 80s, early 90s, like really. 
Uh, I spent all my money doing that. That's my mom and dad, they'll tell you. Um, so I always start out with turning the amplifiers all the way down, turn the radio on, get it about a mid volume and then start easing it up a little bit so as not to you know, accidentally blow something up. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Radio knob is off. That's on. The amplifier power is still off. Radio is off. Let's turn the radio on. I immediately get an amplifier turned on. That's a good sign. Do I have sound? I have sound from the speakers. So on the fader, I turn it to the rear and it gets quieter. I turn it to the front, it gets louder. I can pull this out and say left, right. So all that works. Uh, okay. What next? Do we just go through some stations? Okay, yes. Unfortunately, I can't let you guys hear any of this because copyrights and I'll, oh yes I can. Oh yes I can. Hang on a second. I've got the solution. It's a Zune. Yeah, I have a Zune. You mean you don't? <laughs> I told you, man, I got some old school stuff hanging out and it still works great. Okay, so that's volume all the way up. I'm gonna turn the volume down about half and we'll run this channel one up just a little bitty bit. Probably just do it with my finger now. There, something like that. Do we have Dolby noise reduction? We do, and it works. I hope we have Dolby B and C. C sounds better. Okay. What else we got here? 80s rock. Also, I get the idea that we better test the tape player completely and make sure it's not eating tapes before we go put the stupid thing in there. Just because that little tape to head thing works doesn't mean that the drive mechanism is any good. Doesn't mean it doesn't need belts. So, don't make fun of my cassette tape collection. I've been trying to find these things all over the place and I can't find any good ones. You know, the, the 80s hair bands, Cinderella, Def Leppard, Warrant, Stinger, or winger yeah winger i can't find any of those i've looked everywhere matter of fact if you guys have any you want to part with my address is down below it's in that same description box scroll down there and send me a cassette tape if you want i appreciate it wow who do we want to listen to here today how about some great white once bitten and maybe even twice shy That's encouraging.
Well, that works. How about, uh, can we reverse it? Well, that's the tape pause button. How do you, how do you reverse the tape? Distant memo. No, 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 no. There's got to be some way. There'll be A, B, C. Distant stations. How do you do this? Up and down? No. How about, um, how about fast forward to the next song? Silence detection, I guess is what that's called. Must be a long song. That's the end of it. Oh, it just switched, switched directions. That's good. All right, tape deck checks out. I'll, uh, I'll check the tuner real quick, and then if that all works, then it's car time. Okay, I'm gonna test the front, the, the, the other two channels of that amplifier offline here, off film, off camera. We're not using film anymore. See how old school I am? Everything's film. I'm gonna get my tape out here in a minute and record it. Uh, we do that real quick and then um, we're going to get ready to blow the interior out of this car. Take this car and blow it sky high, interior wise anyway. And we'll start, uh, we'll start a process of putting this in. Excitement starts now. What we're going to do here, I'm going to take the driver's seat out of it. It's dark in there, I have to get some light in there too. Take the driver's seat out. I'll probably go ahead and pull this center console section out. And I may or may not, I may or may not pull the back seat out. I don't know. Potentially, I'll pull the back seat out. And then in the trunk, I got a bunch of junk in the trunk. I got junk in my trunk. I keep a lot of things back here. Cassette tapes. Cell phone. Never know when you might need to make a phone call in 1987. California duster. Some oil, rags, car cover, junk. All that's got to come out, and then we'll pull the trunk floor out. I'll show you where I'm going to put the amplifier. So let me, uh, let me get started cleaning this car out, and we'll get rolling. Also, guys, I make custom speaker boxes. Anybody, uh, anybody needs a custom speaker box made? <laughs> well, I'm your guy. Well, now that my junk's out of my trunk, I'm going to try to fold this all the way back and get it out of my way, completely out of my way. This lifts up, and there is the spur. I think I'm gonna take, yeah, I think I'm gonna take this out of here, this spare tire well cover, because it's pretty well pristine and I don't wanna get it screwed up. Okay. There we go. Check that out. That is the OG spare tire cover out of this car. Look at that. So got all this foam on it. It's all still pliable. The car doesn't have any miles on it. The reason I was so quick to want to put an amplifier in the car, or not minding putting an amplifier in the car, is because right here is a set of RCA cables. A primary wire, a ground wire, and a remote turn on that is already running up front. Like I said, the previous owner had a, um, a stereo in it, and he also had a sub here in the trunk. So when I uninstalled all that stuff, I made sure to keep all this, you know, in case I need it in the future, like today. Um, I think, I think what I'm going to do here, I, th I think I'm going to get this, uh, this side molding off of here, and possibly this rear cover off because I want to put the amplifier underneath this plate so that it's really, really hidden. I, I really don't want this to be a visible thing. I want it to be as out of sight and out of mind as I can possibly get it. Nice and quiet. I'm not worried about heat because I'm not riding down the road jamming tunes. The amplifier's not doing very much work, so I'm really not worried about that at all. So 
I'll start kind of deinstalling some of this stuff and, and uh, I'll bring you back whenever I have something interesting to tell you. Well, this, uh, this tire well has a couple of screws. Boy, it's dark. It's so dark. This car having pretty much a black interior, it's, it's hard for me to see. I know it's hard for you guys to see. And I've got lights blaring on the thing too, and it's still kind of too dark. Anyway, you'll see a screw right there, a screw right there, and a screw right there. Yank those screws out and that whole plate should just, you know, flop up in my face. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for right there. That exact deal right there. Okay. Looks like a couple of computers there, maybe. All right. So I think what I may do is just leave this like it is and decide exactly where I'm gonna put my amplifier. Given this information well we got the seat out and while I'm doing this I'm gonna write a couple of wrongs that right there is the RCA cable that was in the back and you see how it's ran and also that's the remote wire I think we're gonna try to pull this back seat out of it and try to run everything more directly back through there all right we'll have the center console driver seat back seat and uh, factory radio out of the car I didn't show taking all that stuff out because I have another video, the one where I originally put the factory radio back in this car. I covered all that in pretty good detail. Uh, like I said earlier, I'll put a link to that up here if you want to see how that interior comes apart and, and mainly want to see me learning how to do it because it was a straight up learning process. Not as straightforward as some vehicles. Well, now that we have the radio on the bench, let's have a look at it and figure out how we're going to make our, uh, our installation kit work for this application. Factory radio, I, I don't like the way it, it works because these are the only four bolts on each side that actually hold the radio in to the, the bezel. But the thing about it is, you can't get to all four of these with it in the car. So it forces you to take the whole thing out in an assembly like this. And this, this is ABS plastic and it is about as brittle as Pringles. So you have to be super careful when you're working with this stuff or you will just absolutely destroy it. Um, I think I'm going to opt to take these four screws back here out to set the whole thing out with its bracketry on it. That may be a little bit easier for me because if I remember right, some of these screw holes are kind of questionable. Let's see what this does for us. All right, sets right out. Take this radio and I'm just gonna move it aside. We may have to rob brackets off of it later, I don't know. Well, these are two install kits and um, this part is th the actual radio installation portion of the deal. And this is that extra little pocket that, that takes up the extra room because this right here uh, is a, we're gonna put a single den radio in a, in a basically a double den hole. So let me get this stuff out and we'll see how we have to maneuver things to make this work. All right, here's what I have come up with. This is kind of, I guess the best it's gonna be. Um, it's okay. I had to use some zip ties to kind of support this and I'll have to find a way to get this part here bolted to something sturdy on the car. Um, the reason these zip ties are here, I wanted to put these factory ears back on because they screw to this ABS plastic and they also provide two mounting holes for the frame of the car. And that will give me a little bit more rigidity. And um, as, as brittle as this stuff is, you need all you can get. Let's talk about the install kit for a second. I'm gonna put a link down there to Amazon, like I said, for, for these two kits. It's the install kit and the, uh, the little garbage pocket. The deal is this, if, if you're looking for a kit that will just drop right in and work, this is not your kit. Um, if you are a little bit of a mechanic and can solve problems, you can make it work. 
I have not found a single manufacturer that can actually send me or let me buy a kit that is guaranteed to work in this car. I've not found one. So somebody else has had better luck than me. Congratulations. But I have I've done some searching and and you know, there's some older kits out there that say they work, but there's no stock on them anywhere in the United States. So that didn't do me much good. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> that's where we're at. I did a lot of I did a lot of mechanicing on this and a lot of kind of making it work because I absolutely refuse to cut or break or drill holes in anything that's original to this car. At some point, I'll return this thing to stock. At some point, I'll have a radio that works and works right, and I'll put it all back together, and we won't have all this, you know, extra stuff going on. So, you know, at the end of the day, the car is just too nice to go and, and destroy. But for now, this will get the Alpine in the dash and make it somewhat rigid, and it should be somewhat trustworthy in there. So let me go stick that in, and I'll show you what it looks like. This is what the installation ended up looking like here. It came out pretty good overall. I'm satisfied with that part. Of course, I went ahead and vacuumed the floor while I was at it, overachiever. Well, this is what we ended up with as far as the amp mounted in the trunk. It's there at a weird angle because, because on the bottom of this piece of metal that covers it, there are all kind of of like computer modules and stuff so and I wasn't about to relocate and start moving that stuff around again we're going for easy to take this out and return the car to stock and no holes were drilled nobody was harmed two-sided tape has got it down there that's good enough Sounds like we need to take a ride, doesn't it? Let's go.
Well, guys, I appreciate you coming along with me as uh, I install this awesome vintage radio and this awesome vintage old car. Um, listen, guys, uh, if you like this kind of content, I really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up down there. Maybe leave some comments, tell me what you think. Um, anybody has any cassette tapes they're getting rid of? I mean, God, sure do need some. You know, hair bands, that kind of stuff. 80s, 80s rock. That's what I'm after. So, guys, as usual, really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. Guys, I'll see you next time.